Hi, this presentation is presented by Dr. Joanna Sun. Thank you for taking the time to listen and view this presentation on dementia inclusive design. For those who have seen presentations on this topic, you'll find that this presentation will be quite different because here we will be touching on issues of culture and technology. However, we will be touching on and thinking about these topics in a way that will have us consider the impacts of cultural familiarity within the Singaporean population for people living with dementia. In addition, we will be touching briefly on the Singapore Environmental Assessment Tool. The following is the sequence of our points of discussion. First, we will be touching on culture, followed by technology, and the Singapore Environmental Assessment Tool. Lastly, I'll share some local resources that may be very helpful for you in the space of design and interventions. It is easy to take a functional design from an existing project and implement it into our design projects. However, do we stop to question if the design is culturally appropriate? Is it familiar to the people that we are designing? For instance, when selecting images of flowers, fruit, or animals for murals, are they common in our culture? Or is it only recognizable for specific populations or generations? Culture is an essential element. Understanding cultural elements can help us design highly functional and beautiful environments in form. However, it is not highly touched on when we review plans for environmental design. Inclusion of culture can also contribute to dementia care intervention, such as reminiscent therapy and sustainable sensory therapy that taps on the surrounding environment. So for many of us, designing high care facilities for people living with dementia, such as nursing homes or senior daycare centers, it is important to ask ourselves, is our design culturally familiar? Using the examples of the murals mentioned before, we have to ask ourselves, is a design of the mural culturally familiar to Singaporeans? For instance, would the inclusion of orchids be a more appropriate design compared to bluebells or oleanders? Here I'll touch on the need for a home-like design and its meaning for us. When we work on our projects, we need to think about the importance of the environment being home-like. Home-like can mean different things to different populations. For instance, wallpaper is a common element in the homes for some populations, whereas this is uncommon in Singapore. One of the critical things that we should consider in the design of facilities is the use of colours. In a conversation that I had with a client before, a staff member suggested using black as a contrasting colour in all the door frames for seniors in Singapore. Immediately, the, the room went quiet and it was met with many confused looks. The person who had suggested the colour black clarified that it was only a suggestion as black would be a highly contrasting colour to ensure that things stand out. Some of the members in the room quickly piped up that black was a colour that was highly avoided because for a lot of their clients, black was associated with death and bad luck. None of the clients would have painted their door frames black at home. We must remember that different colours can hold different meanings for different populations and generations, even with colours. Even things like colours can have different meanings and messages for people. There's been a significant emphasis on the need for familiarity in this presentation. For those who may not have a clinical or physiological background in understanding dementia, dementia is a syndrome and it is progressive. There is a progressive physiological deterioration of the brain. There are substantial changes within the brain that result in the exhibition of the various signs and symptoms of dementia. Therefore, a familiar environment can be empowering and enabling compared to a new environment that requires one to learn and adapt. We are designing environments for people who are experiencing cognitive impairment. Yet many of our designs require people with dementia and cognitive impairments to learn, understand, recall and tolerate an unfamiliar environment. Looking at a pathogenic environment or an environment that resembles a medical model of care, these environments, unless we work in healthcare, are unfamiliar. For example, some of our residents may not have regularly visited a hospital. 
with the total time that they had visited a hospital accumulated to less than half a day in their entire lifetime. Yet, many residents may live in environments that require the person with cognitive impairments or dementia to adapt to the environment and learn and understand it. When cognitive deficits are apparent to the resident, a new environment that requires recall and not recognition may work against them. These environments would disempower the resident when they are constantly trying to recall how to navigate and live in a new, unfamiliar and unrecognizable space. This will have an impact on the mental and emotional well-being of the individual and feeling of empowerment. In this summary on culture and design, I would like to take you back to the examples of the murals and flowers I had cited. Can you remember the three flowers that I touched on earlier? Many of you may remember the orchid because the orchid is the most familiar and recognizable flower for us. But for some of us, we may remember two out of three flowers, the orchid and the bluebell. The bluebell is easy to remember because the words are familiar and straightforward. However, not many of us may remember the last flower, the oleander. If we didn't recognize the name of this flower, we would have to utilize our ability to recall what was said. Based on this basic exercise, we can experience the level of difficulty in recalling something new. When designing for clients to elicit familiarity, there is a strong bond between the recognition of culture and design. To help with the thought process, here are some of the critical considerations. Do we know the history of the population? Do we know their beliefs, values, practices, activities, preferences? These are really important because these will provide us information on how to design a familiar environment for our clients. In this section, I'll be talking about technology and design. The incorporation of technology in environmental design is an emerging and evolving space. So when I talk about technology, I'm touching on building for sustainability, about infrastructure that can support us and how technology can support us, not just for now, but for the future. We know that change is constant in Singapore. Our population has a tech literacy of approximately 97.5%. Design for people living with dementia needs to keep up with the changing needs of Singaporeans living with dementia, their families and our staff. We know that many technologies can help to empower individuals, support mobility, improve social connections and improve the quality of life and care. We know that technology can also help to give people environmental mastery, supporting them to navigate and make sense of the space around them. If we just look around, we can clearly see the use of technology in the hands of multiple generations of Singaporeans. This is evidently different to when many of our facilities were designed and developed decades ago. The environment needs to keep up with the times as we see a lot more residents, caregivers and staff utilising even mobile devices such as smartphone tablets. Some residents or clients may even have installed brain training apps on their devices or they may be engaging in a range of cognitive stimulation activities on their tablets or computers. With that in mind, we need to be able to meet the needs of the changing population. To expand on technology, we also know that with technological advances, we could introduce several safety measures that can help reduce risk and support residents or clients. There is a range of innovative solutions that may utilize sensors to help monitor movement and mobility. Sensors that enable residents to engage freely in safe spaces. Devices can help promote exercise and monitor sleep quality. Technology that allows us with medical observations such as BP, heart rate, etc. can help staff monitor for physiological changes that may impact physical health, safety and behavioural changes in a resident or client. There are therapeutic sensory innovations that project 
visual stimuli above residents' bids, or custom music therapy to help reduce responsive behaviours. We may have innovative multi-sensory elements along the corridors to support and promote movement and engagement on rooms where technology can help introduce social activities that can be quick to implement for a large group or individuals that allows for tailored approaches and content or a room that allows clients or residents to connect with family far away via video calls on the big screen for social engagement. Technology can also assist staff in reducing infection rates by reducing physical touch points and devices that can be easily sanitized. A range of technological interventions and activities can be safe and quick to implement for groups and can be customized to be person-centered for the individual. Technology is an additional tool in the toolbox of many for the staff and the team, and it can empower staff to deliver better care increasing their confidence in the aspect of care delivery. The list is long, but you can see a range of design elements to think about. Have we storage for devices? Safe and secure charging stations? Do we have enough PowerPoints? Do we have sufficient rooms or multi-purpose rooms that can be converted? Should we need to implement a technological intervention? Even just the basics, does it have a good Wi-Fi signal? Let's move on to the Singapore Environmental Assessment Tool, or the SEAT for short. This is an environmental tool with its foundations in Australia and has been adapted for the Singaporean population. The tool, which is based on 40 years of research in dementia and environmental design, is aligned with evidence-based best practice recommendations and principles of design, which can be found in the Alzheimer's Disease International 2020 report. The tool differs from the Australian version as it includes themes and items that are specific to Singaporeans, such as technology, palliative care, spirituality, and density. In summary, the seat is dementia-specific, designed for Singaporeans, provides a systematic framework for assessment, provides a common platform for design discussions, and guides Singaporean stakeholders. On the topic of assessments, another useful resource that can be found is a 360-degree virtual reality, dementia-friendly HDB home design guide. This app provides virtual solutions for caregivers to help make their home dementia-friendly. The House of Memories app from the National Heritage Board is based on the National Museum's Liverpool's museum-led Dementia Awareness Programme, which offers training, access to resources and museum-based activities to enable caregivers to provide person-centred care for people to live well with dementia. The user-friendly My House of Memories app is free to download and allows you to explore objects from the past and share memories together. It has been specially designed for and with persons living with dementia and their caregivers. The app features relatable everyday items from Singapore's national collection, which are brought to life with sounds, descriptions and images. The objects are also grouped into six key themes comprising festivals and special occasions, lifestyle, food and drinks, household items, jobs and growing up, to enhance usability. You can also create personal albums that are close to the hearts of the persons living with dementia. They can simply snap pictures of objects, people, places, or even practices, and upload them to the app for easy retrieval and use. Thank you so much for tuning in to this presentation.